So we are continuing on with the command of Christ, do unto others. This command was given to us by Jesus in Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 12. Jesus says, Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Gabe, in this particular episode, we want to answer the question, how do we do this command? We also want to kind of talk about some practical how-tos as we go throughout our day-to-day life of how can we carry out this command. Well, and I think as we look at this idea of how do we do it, how do we do this command, I think right away we're struck with we can't do it right. um, in our own strength, and we need Jesus to do it in and through us. For someone to really live out this command, they have to be born again of the Spirit mm-hmm. of God, right? Because the things we're talking about of selflessness and living um, and doing unto others what we want done to us and um, not looking out for our own interests, that isn't possible to do fully in the flesh and in ourselves. So the first step, someone has to be born again of the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Um, It has to, Christ um, has to be living in and through them. Um, I I think of of an example of this. Um, I was involved in a a ministry opportunity, and I remember interacting with someone that um, they weren't saved, and it was like this person couldn't see anything past themselves. I mean, they were very selfish, very self-consumed. I mean, everything seemed to revolve around them, and it was like they couldn't see, I mean, they couldn't see past them, themselves. I mean, they were all about themselves in a lot of ways, and very selfish, and kind of made life somewhat difficult for those around them because there was immaturity and there was selfishness that was there. But um, this person... Um, ended up giving their life to Christ. And it was amazing, the transformation. Mm. I don't know that I've seen a transformation quite like it before, where it was so instantaneous as this person became a new creature in Christ that it was almost like a new set of eyes had opened. And all of a sudden, they became aware of people around them. Mm -hmm. And it was like the way I would put it, if I could put it in words, would be they started almost instantaneously when Christ moved in to beginning to start to treat others the way they would want to be treated. Wow. They became aware of their surra- the, uh, people around them, and it was like, all of a sudden, as a result of the Spirit of God living in them, they began, it was a journey, they still had more growing to do, but it was like they became aware of the needs of those around them, and they began to, uh, or aware of, rather, the people around them, and um, they began to do more unto others what they would want done to them. And so I think, just like um, Jesus said to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, you must be born again, that the only way someone can really live this command, and really any of the commands is if they've been born again of the Spirit of God and Christ is living in them and doing it through them. So the power to do it's a person. And then for us as believers, as children of God, the power to do it is Christ. It's him yep. living in us and doing it through us. And we can't do it in our own strength. I think our whole Christian life, we're always acknowledging these two truths. I can't, but he can, right? right? I can't Amen. do it in my own strength, but he can, and he wants to, and he will. And when he does it in us, when he does it through us, the watching world doesn't look at us and pat us on the back. They look and they see Christ, and Christ is glorified and recognized in us as his people. That's right. And I think, Gabe, that is the key. The key to doing any of these commands is Christ doing it in and through us. And and our listeners might, might be like, okay, so how does that work? You know, what does that look like? You know, in a simple, very simple way, it's just simply saying yes to God. You know, it's saying it's just surrendering and um, abiding in his word. And we do want to give some practical things, though, as we move through this episode of Um, that'll help us that as we're surrendering to the Lord, as we're listening to the Lord, that it would be good to keep in mind. I, I, I do like, however, this quote that someone, that someone shared that I thought was, was really powerful. They said, the ability to give to others what I would want starts with giving God what he wants most. Again, the ability to give others what I would want starts with giving God, what he wants most. And Gabe, I I just was thinking how that there's two commands Jesus gives in the New Testament that he said, these are the most important. He said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And he said on these two commands hangs all the law and the prophets, which is very similar to this command where Jesus says that you know, this is the law and the prophets. And I think what's significant with that is it's almost like when we get 
the first command to love the Lord our God. If it, when we make that our focus, when we make that our number one goal, it's 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 like loving our neighbor just comes as a natural fruit of loving God. And I think the reason why that is the case is that as we love God, as we surrender to him, as he begins to gain more control in our life, our focus, like that like that person that you were talking about that gave their life to the Lord, our focus just continually becomes less and less about me, mm-hmm. and it continually becomes more and more about others. And Gabe, I think, go ahead, you well, had something. I think it's just, it's interesting because with what you're saying about the greatest commandment being to love God and the second one's like it, to love y- your neighbor, and that to just to see that the two are connected. You know, um, the scripture says, this is how we, in First John, it says, this is how we know we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments, mm-hmm. right? And so it's saying, in other words, it's like this is how we know the lo- we love the children of God is when we love God and we keep his commandments, he makes us a channel of his love to those around us. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, and, and, and on the other side of that, it's like scripture says that if we say we love God, but we don't love our brother, right? Then, then something's wrong because it says, how can you say you love God if you've not seen if you don't love mm-hmm. your brother whom you have seen? Mm-hmm. And so it's like loving our brother is a practical expression of our love for God. And so as we love God with our whole heart and we pursue that intimacy with him, he then makes us a channel of his wonderful love that begins to reach others and to touch other people. And this is really the only way that this command to do unto others is fulfilled in our life. It is. So what would it look like to do unto others? Or as Jesus put it, therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. What would that look like on a on a daily basis? And one of the first things I think of, Gabe, is, and again, we've mentioned this in, in our previous episodes, but the thought of what is it? that I desire in my own life? How, how, what are the things that I want to happen? What are, what are my needs? What needs do I feel that need to be met in my life? And then using that kind of like a script and flipping it around and saying, okay, these are tools or these are examples, or these are some ideas of how I can begin ministering in the lives of others. I'll run over a few of them with you here, but just keeping that in mind of, of using using that tool to to do unto others as we would have them do to us. One of the top things, Gabe, that comes to mind is I want to be loved. And not just an ooey, gooey, sentimental, you know, oh, let me do whatever I re- want to do. No, I, I need a love that has parameters. I need to have a love that has standards. I need a love that I need someone to genuinely care for me and to to know what's best for me and to be involved in my life in that way. And I think that's one of the first places we can start with this command, do unto others, is loving people in a Christ-like, God-honoring way. Not necessarily give them one, giving them what they want. You know, sometimes the the greatest thing way that you can love someone is telling them the truth, but telling them the truth in love. But it's 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 loving them as Christ has loved us. Another thing I I think of is we all need to be provided for in some way, shape, or form. 1 John 3.17 says this, But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? You know, it just seems like more and more the needs of people are increasing every day and that the awareness of those needs. Well, I know I'm aware of the needs in my own life. How can I meet those needs in other people's lives? And I think it's really amazing, Gabe, that it's almost like as we focus on meeting, as we we don't focus so much on our own needs, although I think those do need to be met, but as we make the needs of others more of, of, of an important focus, it's like God begins to meet the, my own needs, which is a really incredible thing. What are some other things? We want to be protected. We want to be told the truth. Um, and 
and we wanted we want to be supported emotionally. And I think with that, you know, I, I think what you said was so true is that when I'm pursuing to um, to encourage others and to see their needs and minister into their life, God ministers to the needs in my own heart and life, yes, and He meets yeah. those needs. So it's not that my needs don't need to get met or they don't get met, and it's not that I need to that I ignore those or, things or that you neglect them. Right. It's not that I neglect those needs in my own life, but that it's as I pursue to meet the needs of others that oftentimes mm-hmm. God meets those needs in my life too. I also think it's it's significant. You know, you mentioned this idea of, of being provided for, and just that, that verse from First John where it says, "But whoso hath this world's good and seeth his brother have need and shutteth up his bowels and compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him?" And I think of this situation that happened where I was I was traveling around Thanksgiving time, and we had stopped at a gas station, and um, someone came up to us. Um, that this woman and she was um, from Romania and her and her husband and her son were there kind of parked in the Love's gas station in an RV and um, I, they were trying to travel from one part of the country to another and maybe pursuing a job and, and she had a gas can and she needed it filled with gas because they were running their um, their generator in their in their motorhome to keep you know probably the heat going and things that way and so she asked if I would fill it with gas and, and you know it's like okay you know if the price of gas here in the US has gone very high you know and it's like a five gallon probably thing and you're doing but it was like and I didn't even I, I didn't even think all this when this was happening because it all just happened so quickly. But it's like, you know what? If I had been in her shoes, boy, would I wanted someone to wow. fill my gas tank. I you know, sure would have wanted cold that too. And, you know, I would have wanted that. And I thought, and so and so I did. I, I, pull, I, you know, I took the pump and I stick it over. And as we were filling the gas, just kind of talked to her a little about their family and their situation. And my wife reached out and handed me, a, I think it was a Gospel of John. And so when I finished filling the gas there, I gave it to, you know, we gave it to her. And I said, here, here's, and I gave her that Gospel of John. And she took that and I saw her go back and I saw her go and then putting their gas right into the RV with her her husband and son that were there. But, you know, because people really have, have, kind of needs on two levels they have physical needs right like she needed gas and sometimes people need food and other things but then actually her the greater need that people have is spiritually yep. and so but here's what i think is part of how it works is sometimes when we can meet a physical need it opens a door to meet the greater mm-hmm. need which is the spiritual need and i think this is where that doing to others comes in so much is because when we can reach into someone's life and meet a physical need it's like then a door is open for then us to meet their real need which is spiritual us to share the word and share the lord and share the gospel with them um, or in this case i gave her the book of john and so Physical needs sometimes open the door for spiritual needs. I, I think of other needs people have. You mentioned the need for, for people to be supported emotionally. You know, it's amazing what the scripture says. It says, rejoice with them that rejo- that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. You know, it's not kind of just this surface level, oh, I get you, you know, that kind of thing. It's like this very real, like where you're, you care for them so much that mm-hmm. you're weeping with them and you're rejoicing with them. And it's like communicating God's love and care mm-hmm. for them. That's powerful. Mm-hmm. I also think of um, of the desire for, for people to pray for us. You know, I, to me, I think in, in my life, what I would say is one of the greatest things that someone can do for me is pray for me. And so it's like, how much more than if I want people to be praying for me? And we mentioned this in an earlier episode, should I be praying for them? I think of, I believe it was Samuel in 1 Samuel 12, 23, said, moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. And the verse goes on, but I think, wow, he said he wouldn't sin by ceasing to pray for them. And so same way in our lives, let's not cease from praying for those um, that God has brought across our path and those in need and really asking and seeking and knocking on their behalf. I think one final point, Gabe, that we might bring out before we conclude this episode is another practical way that we can that we can do for others what we would want in return or that we would want to be to even begin with is forgiveness forgiveness and restoration i know it's kind of a simple thing but it really isn't um it's you know i think of of what what one person said that the the five most difficult words in the 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 human language is you know i was wrong will you forgive me actually the seven seven most Mm -hmm. difficult words and you know, we think that might be something small, but it's not. Because if you are able to forgive, it takes care of anger many times and it takes care of bitterness, which can control and actually can poison and many times destroy a life. And so Ephesians 4.32 says this, And be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. So for our listeners, I think a wonderful way to end this episode is 
just like it talks about in Ephesians 4.32, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. We've been forgiven so much. God has done so much for us. How can we carry, how, how can we bless others? How can we carry the blessings of that, of what we have been given and bless others in the same way? And, and we can't. We can't if, if we are succumbing to selfishness and, and a focus on ourselves. But my challenge to you is pray and ask the Lord to open your eyes of how you can minister, of how you can be a channel. Really, what we're talking about is being a channel of the love of God in the lives of other people. And I think you will be amazed that as you meet the basic needs of others, how that will open up doors that you could never imagine to meet their spiritual needs or for the Lord to meet those needs in their life. So we hope that this episode has been an encouragement to you. Make sure you share it um, and subscribe if you'd like to follow with our upcoming episodes. And we look forward to our next episode. This is going to be our final episode on the command do unto others. So we hope that you stay tuned to hear the concluding thoughts on that. God bless you.